This Macintosh Classic 2 was sent in by a subscriber all the way from Scotland. Couldn't get any life out of it. There's no startup chime, there's no display, just a blank screen and a silence. We'll take a look inside, check the usual suspects and see if we can bring this classic Mac back to life. On that note, let's crack on. Hi, my name's Neil and welcome to Repto For You. Now, before I begin, I want to give a shout out to Thomas. Now, he's very knowledgeable at refixing Max and if I need any advice, he's always there willing to help me. Now, he does repair Macs in the US of A, so if you've got a Mac that needs repairing, then have a look down below. There's a link to him. He's called Amiga of Rochester and he also repairs Amigas as well. He's a very knowledgeable guy and he's very good at repairing. Not only that, he's also mentioned, if you mention Repto for you, he give you a bit of a discount as well. So it's a win-win. So if you're in the USA and you need a repair, be sure to check out his site down below. Now on that note, let's crack on. Hello and welcome. Today we've got this. It's a Macintosh Classic 2. Now this has been sent in to me for repair. Now it's a 110 volt, but I have got a AC to AC converter there hooked up to it. So we're just going to turn it on and see what it does. Apparently it's been in storage for a long time. So let's just turn that on. I can hear fans. The screen has not lit up at all. It's just like it, it's totally dead. All I can hear is fans. That's it. There's no screen brightness down here or anything that I know of. Usually there's a switch under there, wasn't there? But not on these ones. I've not done one of these before, but it's going to be interesting, I'm sure. So all it's doing is making that noise and it's completely dead. So I think the first protocol is to get it unplugged. We will get the back off, we'll discharge the screen and we'll take the board out, have a look, see if we can see anything unusual. As usual, with any Mac like this, you need this very long screwdriver, especially to get into these top ones. So let's just get these unscrewed. Now so already there's a screw missing up there. So somebody may have been into this. What we're going to do next is we're going to take this board out and just have a look to see what's been going on. I do see some jumper wires down here. You can't see them at the moment, but there is some jumper wires. But first, I want to discharge this screen anyway. So let's get that sorted. So we're just going to click onto this earth here. And then we're just going to feed the screwdriver into there, easier said than done. And we're just going on clip it, just like so. Now that is safe. So as I said before, somebody's definitely had a go at doing some things on this board. Look at this cap for instance, it's at a funny angle. There's corrosion along here, which has not been looked at. There's also corrosion down here, but that cap should not be at that angle. But also if you look down here, these other capacitors, this one here is at a funny angle. The pad there is missing and it looks like it's been tried to join onto there. And you can see there that is just falling off. It's not even soldered onto anything. So somebody has had a go, but obviously not attempted. You can see it's moving, it's not even soldered. Also down here, again, all these caps have been replaced. That one looks like it's chipped on the top. There's another one here at a funny angle. There's a, another one there. Then we go over to this side of the board, and again, you can see these caps here have been replaced. Again, replaced, and they're all like doing like hills. All right, there's corrosion around these legs here. There's a wire being put onto here, which then goes down to this side of this one here, because I guess 
somebody's lost another pad here. And also there's another pad missing there by the looks of it. Maybe, but obviously he's took this pad off. He's tried to follow the track. Which then goes maybe to under there, I'm not quite sure. But what we'd have to do is take all these caps off and try to scrape this pad back here, this track. And then try and source it back to that pin, but put some Kynar wire in, because that, that wire gauge there is just too thick. No wonder he struggled soldering that. So at the moment, this board definitely needs looking at. So we're just going to power this on now for the first time after the recap. And now we have some lines, which is different than before. Jail bars are better than no lines. Before all we had was a blank screen. So hopefully we're getting somewhere with this. The next thing we can do is remove the egret, clean all the pads, etc. And remove the memory, a few other chips off the board, etc. And just clean it out and see if we can get rid of the capacitor juice. It has been through a bath, an old solid bath, but it hasn't seemed to have cleaned it well enough. We do need to get to the bottom of this and see what's causing it. So let's crack on. So the next thing I've done is I've started to reflow all these contacts on the CPU legs. Now you can see these are the ones I've done, how lovely clean they are. You can see how the muck was coming off here. There was a lot of muck on them, which came off when I'd actually reflowed them. Compared to this side here, you see which hasn't been done. So we're just going to carry on and doing that and you can see the muck that will come off. Okay, so it's another day. We're back on this Apple Macintosh board. Now, what my plan is today, because of all these capacitors here, I reckon when these leaked, they leaked underneath these memory chips here. 
So what I'm going to do is to remove these four memory chips here and then just scope out the tracks to check there's no broken traces but also clean them up and re them on to make sure there's no capacitor juice underneath these four slots of memory because as I'm seeing corruption on the screen it could be something to do with this memory here causing a short so without further ado let's crack on and get them removed. Many unbearable hours later. So we've done all that work now. Let's see if we've got any difference whatsoever. Again, it's powering on. Before we had jail bars. And unfortunately we've got jail bars still. But there doesn't seem to be as much corruption. It seems to be a cleaner image. So something is going better, I presume. Well, it looks that way anyway. Now the next thing I want to try is to program some ROMs just to take them out of the equation. So without further ado, let's crack on and get those ROMs done. So here's the four ROMs along the bottom. There's two versions of this board. The early one is a four ROM version, which we have here. And the later version had two ROMs. So I've programmed the ROMs there. I've labeled them up. We're just going to pop them in. We've replaced the ROMs and now we're going to turn it on again and see if we get any difference. Hopefully no jail bars. Let's see. So now that is looking promising. Hopefully it's going to work. I haven't heard a bong though, which is very unusual. Now we have a cursor. We've got a happy Mac and it's loading into Mac OS. This is actually working now guys, apart from it doesn't seem to have any sound whatsoever. Because it should have really bonged at the start. Now, what I'm going to do next is we're going to take that board out and I'm going to have a look around the sound chip area because I know that is another area that can get affected by the capacitor juice. So whether or not we take the sound chip off, maybe we take the sound chip off and then we clean the pads again, clean it all up and re-solder it and see what happens because this doesn't seem to be working whatsoever. I'm just going to load Tetris just to clarify that the sound isn't working. I just need to plug a mouse into this thing, unfortunately. So it can load that. But we're actually getting somewhere, guys. It is alive, which is a bonus. So we'll just plug the mouse in. I'm just gonna run Tetris. as you can see Tetris is loading but I can't hear any sound whatsoever sound is turned on I can clarify the sound isn't working so I guess it's back to the repair bench and see if we can fix that one last thing
So I've replaced the sound chip off the other donor board. We've cleaned all the pads. Let's just see what happens now. Did you hear that? That was an actual dong. It looks like the sound is actually working now. But we can prove that. We can just go into Tetris and we can see that. Let's see if it works. I do have the mouse connected here again. But I definitely heard a bong then. Which is absolutely brilliant. Nothing at the moment. I think it's when it gets into the main screen where you get music. There you go. Hopefully you can hear that. Now that is now a fully working Mac. It can go back to Scotland now and hopefully the subscribers should be happy. Now, I'm going to end the video now here because you can see it's working. It came in with a blank screen. It's had a, a lot of work done to it, but I've enjoyed doing it. I enjoy working on these Macs and I have learned a lot more about these as well. This is the first Macintosh Classic 2 I've repaired. So hopefully there's more to come. So I see you in the outro. So thanks for watching everybody. We're at the end of another video. Now next week I may be building a retro chip tester. I'm not quite sure what we're doing or we may be grabbing another machine off the shelf to repair. Now I do enjoy repairing these machines especially when they don't work like this one was a great repair but I tend to not give in and just carry on and on and on. It takes me a long time but it's so great when I get there at the end. So please hit that thumbs up button if you're here. And also, if you're new, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more videos on the way. Check out our Retro Repairers group down below. There's the likes of Captain Commodore, 8-Bit Retro Refix, and Joe Sib. They all do great things. And also there's a link to our Discord there, where you can come along and chat to us all and talk about all things retro. Now, next week, I'm going to the retro show in Swindon, so expect some footage from there and hopefully a video on that as well. And if you're going, I'll see you there. And on that note, I shall see you again on Retro For You. See you soon, guys. Bye.